Hi, and welcome to my video on how to make washable, no-sew fabric photo frames. See this? A no-sew fabric photo frame. That's my photo, by the way. <laughs> so, hi. I am Christy Hubler. I own FabricatedFrames.com, and I am using Zazzle fabric, fabric that is new to Zazzle. And I invented a way to make fabric photo frames washable and yet not soon. So this is great because it has six main layers. It has two for the frame front, two for the frame middle, and two for the easel back. The easel back board, which could be cardboard or mat board, is removable. And there's a strut leg. It's this part here is glued to the top. There is a space between the layers, which is open. Uh, all of the layers are backed with what's called heat and bond, ultra hold, uh, which is by Thermoweb. And you can also uh, print the patterns, which I will have on Craftsy.com, at Craftsy.com slash user slash 2496069 slash pattern dash store. That is going to be on my YouTube channel in the description in case you didn't get that. And it is a paper-packed iron-on fabric adhesive that you cut to the size of all your patterns. You'll have ten. Six for the main, uh, two frame front borders, two frame middles, and two easel backs, and four for the strut leg pocket, two for its front panel, and two for its back panel. And it even has a removable strut leg as well. And you just do this, scooch it out, like so. See? And it's pretty easy. You just iron the fusible web to the back of your fabric. You cut away the corners. You fold your seam allowances to the back. And then you um, hot glue your panels together. There is a little bit of a trick. Three of the inside panels, uh, the in the second inside frame front border panel and the two frame middle panels, uh, the patterns for the thermal web that you'll print out will have holes, little circles, uh, seven holes on each of them to cut out with embroidery scissors like these. These are inexpensive. You can get them at Michael's or Joann's. And uh, you cut the easel back and the strut leg board slightly. Well, the strut leg board is on um, in the patterns. It's also on the Zazzle uh, fabric, uh, washable, no-sew fabric uh, panels by the yard that I have or by the fat quarter, depending, uh, that the panels are, are laid out on there. And you have, you hole punch the back on two spots for the two easel back panels to hang. You'll see that Later on you'll see pictures of it hanging. And there's a ribbon that connects the bottom right corner of the strut leg between the layers and between the layers of the easel back panel and the frame middle panel. And this allows it to stand, as you can see, it is standing. See, it's standing on its own without me touching it. And again, hot glue, thermal web, embroidery scissors, ribbon, uh, the ribbon, another thing, there is skinny ribbon that connects the three panels that I was talking about uh, with the holes on them. You loop those, you thread those through the holes, and that makes your, your pocket for the photo. And it's protective sleeve, which believe it or not, is a cut up sheet protector. It's acid free, just make sure you buy the ones that are labeled acid free by the pack. They're about 50 uh, pages per pack for like three and a half bucks, five bucks tops, Target, Walgreens, Walmart. And right now I'm going to begin and show you how to make one of these. And again, they're washable. You just put them in the wash, you uh, put them in a lingerie bag on the cold, delicate cycle, use mild detergent, no fabric softener, and then let you know, stand them up on a towel to air dry. Thank you very much. Let's begin. Hi, my name is Christy Hubler, and again, here we are, uh, FabricatedFrames.com. I'm going to show you how to 
take some Zazzle fabric, fabric that is now available at Zazzle.com and turn it into a washable, no sew fabric picture frame, fabric photo frame. Now, the only thing that I think you would need now this is going to be for a 5x7 frame, a frame for a 5x7 photo. It's going to measure 8 by 10 inches. So as you can see, I have a fat quarter here. Uh, how can I put this delicately? I, you may see some stitching. I had a little fabric print error, so uh, I remedied it. And I'll, I'll say it's my fault. Uh, but as you could see, this fabric, I thought, I'm not wasting it. It's still good. And come to find out, it is perfect for the sides of the frame that you're going to see. You do not need it for the inside panels of the frame. I have 10 uh, panels, 10 patterns panels to make the frame. You have your frame front border which is the front of the frame. That's the front of the frame where the picture window right here, where the main line is, the outer line right here. That's where the photo is going to show through. These are seam allowances, by the way, that get pulled under and folded under and sewn or glued in this case. Um, this is your frame front is going to be this area right here. This is your frame back. Now, these, as you can see, are the paper side of the heat and bond. You can see right there it says heat and bond. It is by Thermaweb. See this row right here? This is heat and bond by Thermaweb at thermawebonline.com. You can get it at Michael's. You can get it at Joann's. You can get it at AC Moore. You can get it all over the place. And this is by the roll. You get this at Michael's. To get it by the roll, it's five yards. That's 15 feet by 17 inches wide. With a store coupon you can get it as low as $4.49 plus tax. That is the best deal that I've seen to get this. So I highly recommend using a Michael Stu store coupon and buying yourself a roll. It is, you could use it for so much. But in this case we're using it for to make the photo frames because it acts like your pattern. It is your pattern. You're going to transfer your printouts onto all the lines onto the ThermalWeb. There's another thing as well. ThermalWeb is now offering what they call Easy Print. They are eight and a half inches by eleven inches, so they're full regular printer paper sheet size, basically. And since these are eight by ten, these fit perfectly on them. They come in a pack of 10 sheets, which is absolutely perfect for this project. They are available as well at joann.com. They were just on sale the other day for 50% off. That's That 50% off is $3.99. I highly recommend when you see it on sale, get some. It prints directly onto the paper. You peel the one side off. You iron it to your to your fabric. Then you cut out your, your parts, fold your seam allowances under, fold your outer seam allowances under, onto the back side. It is absolutely perfect. But this gives you a lot more. So either way, the Easy Print or the Heat and Bond Ultra Hold, the Easy Print is available in what they call Heat and Bond Light, Feather Light. You can still use that, that's fine. They're both the same. The only thing is, is that this, the Ultra Hold, the red packaging, it's acid free and it's thicker than the feather light or the heat and bond light. Still, it's fine for this project because you're not sewing, so that's okay. And um, so, this project with this fat quarter of fabric, it is perfect. I wound up getting combed cotton. It's perfect for the three parts that are going to show on the frame the frame front, the easel back, that's the back of the frame and the strut leg panel that faces out front. Now let me show you something. You have plenty of space to have an outer seam allowance, your inner seam allowance for the picture window you would uh, cut the center out and snip it and fold under uh, to the back side. It's perfect. Use your guidelines on your paper to center your everything as well. You wonder, oh, how am I going to do this with, a, with this print? 
You see where I have pin marks, your straight pins? You would figure out, and you could also transfer the patterns, the paper patterns, to clear vinyl or uh, sheet protectors. Just transfer the lines with a Sharpie marker around them, straighten them up with a ruler, and cut around them, and figure out your patterns. Pin them, as you can see, I made little pin register marks, so that way I know that everything's going to be even. Now you may see, oh, this side looks different than this side. That's because this is the paper side. This is the paper side. This is the glue side for the strut leg panel. You're going to make sure you grab the right strut leg panel when you do this because, as you can see, this is the fabric side print up. This is the glue side, glue side up. This is going to be ironed to the back of the frame. You follow the pin marks. Let's see, where are your pin marks? Here we go. You follow. I'm going to do, redo this pin mark. What you could also do is put a pin through the spot. I think I'm going to show you here. Okay, bear with me. That's not what I wanted. Uh, put the pin, poke it through where they where they are, and do that for all all of the all the corners. And that way, you turn it over, you iron this glue side to the back side. And then cut it around, make, have seam allowances, and snip your corners, and I'll show you that later. And that way you have an even design for everything. You may see the hole here. That's on the paper side, because when you flip it over, the hole is really going to be on this side. And the leg, since it's, this pattern is situated this way, evenly to go over to match up with what's here, because it's going to lay this way, it's going to lay on top, and the patterns are going to match. And that, you just have to be a little uh, cognizant. Just be aware and stop every few minutes to make sure you've got everything the right direction, and you'll be fine. And so, besides having a frame front and an easel back and a strut leg panel, you're going to get three more like this, only the other two of the three are going to face the opposite direction because you're going to have one go this way you're going to have one go this way so they match up basically you're going to have a second inside frame middle panel you're going to have two frame I'm sorry you're going to have a second inside frame front border which basically goes on the back side of this but it's going to be um, the glue side up, this, I mean, I'm sorry, the paper side up. Uh, you see these holes? You get three panels on the inside. You're going to connect the fabric panels that these go on. You're going to poke out these holes, these circles. You're going to run ribbon through them, the skinny ribbon, the, those really skinny, skinny, skinny ribbon, the 1 16th of an inch width. And you run it through the holes in and out, in and out, in and out. And then you repeat it and go back. And you do that for these three panels because between these two make a frame middle panel and this is the back side of the frame front. And between the you know the, between these two, these are going to be joined. This is going to be above it. This makes a pocket for the photo and its photo sleeve, a sheet protector, a sheet protector photo sleeve cut up to the size of the photo. So everything's going to be aligned on your patterns with the circles. You're going to they're going to be laid out just where you need them. Again, I highly recommend getting the easy print. And then the only remaining panel, uh, besides the other three uh, strut, besides the other uh, three strut leg panels that make the strut leg pocket, you're going to get this. And this has the hole. Uh, the only thing is, I'm not going to add these holes here. I'm going to take that off because you don't need that. Because guess what? You're just going to glue this easel back panel to this easel back panel. And it's going to make a pocket between these two panels, this finished easel back panel, and these two frame middle panels. When they get joined on the three sides, that makes a pocket for your easel back board, which is mat board or cardboard. <laughs> it is really simple. You do not need any extra major tools. Everything you can get is from the art supply store or a craft store or a fabric store. Also, I also I want to explain, there's going to be, actually I'm going to make it bigger. Uh, you need at least a half inch uh, separation. You're going to keep this. Uh, 
but you're going to cut it away but you're still going to keep it aside because when you put it back to a line where you need things to go you are going to want to um, use that as a spacer and then once you put these in position then you can put this aside this space right here it's actually going to be like this it's going to allow the strut leg pocket to bend <laughs> seriously it's going to allow it to bend and you're going to have a ribbon that goes from in between the layers here to in between the layers uh, at the bottom right here and it's going to allow for the strut leg to pitch out so that you could stand it on a table i'm telling you it is super super simple all right so the holes may take you a few minutes i mean it's really not that hard there's only you know three sets it's like seven holes they connect the holes to, to connect the pockets to allow for the photo and its sleeve to stay in place that's why they're there and they're not it's not hard it, you just need one of these honestly it could, ginger michaels uh joanne sells them embroidery scissors they are so worthwhile you buy them they, with a coupon it is great and you will use them for so many different things highly recommend it i got mine for about five dollars and forty cents from um michaels a few years a few years ago so all right let's make these okay so we have the fabric flipped over we have the pins poking out our register marks from the other two pins on each corner the third pins on each corner sticking out as you could see Let's see in there yeah it's hard to see that one Wait, let me do this aha uh -huh. and there you go so there's they're aligned in there and then I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna iron this from the center out it's about a second no steam no no uh just dry iron or just turn your part off that makes steam and uh just iron it on to the back from the center out and then we'll cut out the center here snip into the corners fold them back and we're going to also do the other uh patterns as well we're going to do uh the back easel back with the print on it and with the register lines and their pin marks used as you could see right here pen see the pin okay and for the leg as you can see i cut out that center i'm going to keep it uh, i'm not going to make it any bigger i've decided and uh we're going to uh put those on the back side obviously and uh, we don't want glue on the front and uh then we'll make the other patterns so we have the front frame front border that's the front of the frame we have the back of the easel back with the print that's going to show when you flip the frame over on the on the easel back and the fabric which looks like it's folded uh for the strut lug panel that faces out front when you turn the frame over and we'll do that as you can see here i have everything aligned i ironed this down and i put it between the my little register marks and my pin sticking out on the back side paper side up glue side down i'm about ready to iron this piece down remember you're only using this as a guide to where to place everything you know just to, to make that spacer you need to take this part out like i am doing now okay Oopsie, do, 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 do. Do. here we go make sure it's all nice and aligned okay that looks good like that see now I'm gonna iron this piece took this out okay so this is what the front's gonna turn out to be soon I have the inside flaps the center cut out the inside seam allowances uh, cut into each of the corners and folded under and then the outer seam allowances get folded under to the back and this is what it's going to look like as you can see i'm assuming and so over here you can see what i did i turned everything cut into the corners cut their center around i just dug in cut around and you know you could flip it and fold these two together face sides together and you know poke in and go around the line and then just snip in just be very careful not to go past the line when you do that and what happens is if you snip the angled uh, seam allowance uh, lines down correctly these angled ones 
it, they kind of almost pull it to the line that you need to pull it to. It's almost like, I guess, gravity or something. That, that It just, they go right in place. So, and then just burn it. Use your fingernail and burnish it on both sides. This side along the line and on this on the other side as well. And uh, as you can see, I cut the outer corners away. I'm going to poke the holes through. And as you can see with this, I made sure there was nothing there. And I used these lines as guidelines to snip out uh, the excess fabric at the corner. So as you could see, I used that line and that line. And just do it very carefully. There's nothing in here. It's just fabric. Just the glue underneath this piece and this piece. And then when you adhere and glue everything together, this will be loosey-goosey, so to speak, so that it allows it to bend. So now we have to do the other seven patterns. We have to do uh, the three plain solid colored uh, strut leg panels, the second inside frame front uh, panel solid color that gets connected to the, the other two frame middle panels and the inside easel back panel. Uh, it's going to get, those are going to get the, the, the frame middle is going to get hot glue to on the three edges. And that inside easel back panel is just the back side of this. As you can see, the hole is here, but when you turn it over, the hole is going to be here, and the leg is going to go like so. It is going to line up. Once I get this all nice and warm, here we go. Oh, bear with me. It'll be basically, you know, everything folded under and aligned like that. As you can see, it's not there yet, but there you go. Let's do those other pieces. Alrighty. Okay, so we have, as you can see, uh, we're ready to iron the seam allowances. As you can see, they're snipped around the edges. I followed the lines on these I'm odd angled uh, corners here. So I followed the lines for snipping. And some of them you can do about 45 degrees. These other two, what are they called, obtuse angles, I think they call them in geometry. You follow the line this way and you follow the line that way. And I left the space here. As you can see, there is absolutely no fusible web, no thermal web, heat and bond, ultra hold, or light, or feather light in between the center area. I used about a half inch, roughly a half inch space between. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel these off, and I'm going to fold these over and and iron these seam allowances, or SAs as I call them, down to the feasible web underneath this paper. And I'm going to do that for all four pieces, the two that make the finished back panel, and over here are the two that make the front panel with the design on the front uh, here, as you can see. This is without the seam allowances being ironed down. So we're going to hold the seam allowances on the fusible web side, under, on the back side if you will, uh, print side down, fusible web side up, and hold it down. I'll use, I'll do like this, I'll hold it where the iron is and start from the center and work your way out. And then when you get up close, really push that down and gently nudge it in place. And So let's do that. Okay, let's see here. Let's see what we have. Keep your papers. Keep your papers, your paper backings that you peel away, because you could use those for later when you're hot gluing or ironing, etc. Anything you're doing, you, you want to keep the iron away from your uh, your paper. Here, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start. I'm going to start at this end here. Now, now watch what I do. Here we go. Let me see. I think you can... Oops, that's too close. Oh, that's not... Sorry about this. I'm trying to do this while holding it down. You see how I'm... See how I'm doing that? See that? Okay. So, I know it's kind of hard, but I'm going to hold this and push it as I go. Oops. Wait a second. It would help if I turn it on. That would be nice. Hold a second. Let me start over. Let me wait for it to turn on. <laughs> that would be smart. I'm going to 
I'm going to start here. We're, we're back again. Camera's on. I'm going to start with this side. Uh, I guess you could say it's right uh, straight vertical line. I'm going to start by doing that. And if you get any glue on your iron surface, just go and you can turn it off when you're done. Turn it off and uh, turn it off and wait for it to thoroughly cool off. And then just use a, a Brillo pad and scrub it off. And then just wipe it with either a, a cloth. Oh, let me see, get you in there. Sometimes you really got to get those in there. So try to see what I'm doing. You could either start from the center and work your way out. Oh, oh and two. Um, I'm sorry, you're not seeing that. There we go. Two, if you push towards the edge, you literally, you see what my fingers are doing? You literally will feel against where the fusible web is uh, starting and stopping. So uh, it helps guide you to where to stop uh, pulling I mean, the fabric. Uh, so, okay, here we go, pulling. And, uh, and, uh, and that's pretty much what you do. You just iron these down. And uh, I'm going to do that for all five sides of the strut leg panel and all four sides and inside seam allowances of the picture window. The other rectilinear panels, if you will, rectangle patterns. Uh, and uh, see, sometimes you can get in there and let's see, yeah. try to get in as close as you can to that edge get that corner in there I would say always use the, the tip here that you see when you're um, ironing them down I'm going to do the rest of them and um, come back and I'm going to show you another little trick for these uh, these corners right here to get them so if you see they're like open and afraid looking it, you don't want that you kind of want to nudge them in with the tip of your iron. I'll show you how to do that next. Okay, so you can see here, here's my uh, one finished panel. You can see here, there's open space here. No fusible web, but you can see here these two shiny sides are, you know, with the fusible web. So the same allowances are folded over nicely. If you notice what I did here, I kind of nudged the little corners. Anything that frayed... I, what I did was I took it and I just rubbed it against, rubbed it against the iron just for a second or two. And then I just gently pushed it back, as you can see, and it stays in place. And then what you could do if you really want to, you could also add some hot glue, just a dab. Use the nozzle and the tiniest little bit to pop out of your glue uh, gun and use the nozzle and nudge it or push it to the back. And do that before you join the panels. So I have this one. I have this one finished too. So what I would do is I would. Let's see here. I am going to show you. Okay. Here we go. Let's just show you for a second. I'm trying to. Okay. This is the back. So it's got it in place. I'm sure it's on this one. And uh, aligned. As you can see. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to get as aligned as possible here so that it's all even. Okay. And as even as I can get it. So you see how it is. Of course, see how it's double layered here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to iron uh, like this and then iron all across here and iron to about here. I'm going to leave, I'm sorry, this side up to about here. Iron, iron, iron these two panels together. I'm going to leave this side right here open for the ribbon to go in and then I'll iron it. I, I've obviously we're going to use a light blue or a color that's not going to show through uh, the panels. I know this is the back side and it's going to face in. 
but just in case, try to use a ribbon that goes with the colors in uh, the fabric uh, as light as possible so that it's inconspicuous. Uh, with this being light blue, you'd want to use something either this color or lighter so that it doesn't show through. Especially if you're using thinner fabrics. This is a, a symphony broadcloth, so I'm going to use either this color or lighter underneath. I'll have just about that much going through. Just enough uh, to hold. And they'll stay together and you can always glue that here and glue it in here along the edge here and along here. And uh, go from there. Um, but at least you'll have the ribbon in the back. It, it's going to... Wait a second. It is going to... When you have the... Let's see. Yeah, this is going to... This is... This is the back side facing the easel back panel. This is the side that's going to face outwards because these two panels, when they get together, will go on top of this. So we're going to put on top of that. So we're going to put the ribbon. Actually, you know what I'm thinking? Actually, I'm going to put the ribbon in between these two panels because think of it. That's the one that's pitching out the most, the top one. So I'm going to put it between these two panels. You'll see what I mean towards the end, but that's what I am going to do. So I'm just going to iron this whole entire thing, and I think that's all I'm going to have to do. Uh, and then what you could do afterwards, and this is with all the finished panels, once you have the seam allowances ironed under, uh, I put glue around the outer edge and join your panels. Do it along this edge, between the two layers, along here, along here, and along here. But when you take these two panels and join them together, like you did this one, you want to leave an opening between these two panels and these two panels when they're finished. You have to have an opening. But the, when they, they get glued together. But just make sure between this two and these two, these two and these two, that there's an opening. And then you'll just glue uh, here and here, and then here, here, and here. Leave an opening, and I'm going to make the board go in that way. This is going to be butted up against the easel back. Um, trying to figure out if I'm going to use Velcro or or hot glue it in place. I'm thinking. So that's what we're going to do. Let's finish these two, put them together, and um, iron them, iron them, iron these together, iron these together, and do the other panels. Uh, get these all, all the seam allowances outside and inside ironed out. Okay. Okay. So we have the seam allowances ironed down. Uh, here's a little trick with this. Because of the fact that I had pleated every other uh, every other um, section, as you can see, I, let's go closer. You see the sun line? You see the sun line? I pleated it. I just folded over the, 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 the lines of art, the repeats over, like line by line by line by line. Okay. Well, because of all that gathering, as you can see here, this is the bottom layer closest to it ironed down, and you have some layers that are still flipping up. We're going to do the thing where we, you know, do this to get the edge to nudge back a bit. But, okay, see that? This is going to be tricky. We're going to have to use some hot glue and, um, or, or anything. You could use uh, the Thermoweb Heat and Bond uh, tape, or you could use their fabric fuse tape, you could use double sided acid free scrapbooking tape if you want. Whatever it takes, hot glue, just make sure that they get thoroughly ironed down so that way when you go and take your uh, your patterns, you're, you're matching up uh, the back here, as you could see, to the back of this, you want to make sure that you want to make sure that all the sides are thoroughly down before you put this one on top of it, and flip it over and put your ribbon on this side and all that fun jazz. So just make sure that your seam allowances are thoroughly hunkered down, if you will, before you iron that to it. Okay, let's do. I'll do that later. Meantime, let me do these other six panels. And uh, as you can see, ooh, why is that off? I don't know why that's up like that, but 
this is a uh, finished down. Okay, down there. So there you go. Let's try to make it. Let's do that. And, um, have it lay flat. Let's do this one now. Okay. Okay. I'm going to uh, skip uh, showing you how to iron the. Let me see. One, two, three. Uh, four rectangle uh, panels for the two for the uh, frame middle and the two for the easel back, including this art one right here, which is the back easel back. I'm going to skip doing that. I'm going to focus on uh, doing uh, the frame front, the front of the frame, as you could see. With the you see, even the lines are where the picture window is because I folded along those lines on the paper okay so what we're going to do is if you could see here i'm trying to do this so you could see the shiny ah see here's the shiny versus the 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 fabric itself here's the fusible web the shiny part of the glue from the the thermal web the heat and bond okay so i'm going to hold these down and uh, what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I, I really pressed close to the edge and tried to do as much of a 45 degree angle as possible. So, and this one's going to be tricky too because, again, it's quilted. It's almost like quilting where it layers, so some may stick up, some may stick down, but at least it, it'll generally stick down for you. And I'm going to iron the outer seam allowances down, and then I'll do the inner one over it. And we're just going to have to use hot glue and the tip of the iron, like we did with the other bits, uh, to make sure everything's flat and down and, 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 you know, stuck in place. Anything that sticks up, we'll use hot glue and put down before we start assembling everything together. Okay, so, here, let me see what I can really show you. Okay, well, this is a bit tricky to do this with, you know, one hand. Well, I got it actually down. Okay, here we go. Actually, it makes a nice corner. You see what I'm doing? Okay. I'll get that, and then I'm going to just press. Wait a second. Press on the edge. Here. Let me see. Okay. On that edge. I'm going to follow. Let's see here. And luckily, it's almost slide. Here, okay, try and make this even here. Okay, try to make this nice and even. Okay. okay. Let's see. Yeah, okay, you're doing it. Going along that edge, trying to make a nice seam. You see what I'm doing? I'm taking the tip and nudging it. And go iron those down. Okay. Okay, and um, I'll show you how we do the inside too. So let's follow that. Here we go. You see what I'm doing? Pulling it down like that. I'm going to start from the center and work my way out to the edges. I'm trying to keep a nice line here. And sometimes if you have to press down with the tip of your iron, that's fine. Do that. Get in there and get those corners. Sometimes then we have to we'll use glue, remember. I'm trying to get this at least down. Here we go. And um, you see? Okay. We'll put glue in the corners later, push from the front and uh, you know, push to the back from the front. Push with the hot glue and the nozzle of the hot glue gun. We're gonna iron down anything that like for example right there. This looks like it's double it's double layered, so we'll add some glue there. Just make sure everything's down. I'm going to finish doing the other sides, then I'm going to do the other uh, frame middle pad, the, sorry, excuse me, the second inside frame front border. I'm going to do the outer seam allowances and the inside seam allowances. If you notice, I, not, I notched out around the circle. The reason why I notched out around the circle is because when you put the ribbon through the holes to join the second inside frame front border to the two frame middle panels with the holes, uh, let me show the holes that I uh, uh, 
uh, cut out you're going to um you don't want excess fabric uh going over your holes so that's why i notched out wherever there was a hole and there was a seam allowance going near or on it i notched out around it so you can do that with your embroidery scissors and if you don't have to you don't have to like along here i don't have to but here i had to there and I'm going to show you how to um, cut a hole out, too. Uh, it's so simple. You can do these holes. It's seven on seven holes on three inside panels, second inside frame front border, and the two frame middle panels. And the easel back panels have two holes on each of those. So that's 21, 22, 23, 25 holes. You can do it within less than a half hour, tops. Watch, do something while you watch TV. We'll do that next. Oops. Sorry about that. <laughs> Dropped the camera. Oops. Oh no. Okay, I'm going to show you how to cut these holes out. It is so incredibly simple. Okay, so you notice this is a second inside frame front border. It has seven holes. Same thing with your two frame middle panels. They have seven holes. Three on the bottom, and these two here, and these two here. Centered uh, in respect to uh, where your picture is going to lay. Uh, this is uh, six and a half by four and a half for the picture window, which means I'm giving a quarter of an inch on the side, a quarter of an inch here, uh, more than a quarter of an inch on this side. That extra bit allows you to slide the photo in and out easy, so you always leave one side just a little wider, so it's going to come out just a little more. And then the quarter inch um, here, so it's going to sit nice and tight, centered in the frame. Uh, this is a wider frame, as you can see on here, because this gives you more surface for the art on your frame. Now, some they may not want it, some may want it. I, that's why I offer uh, frame front borders where it's the wider one and three quarter inch, or you can have the inch. That way it gives more uh, space to show the photo. It depends. It, or, you know, you want the photo to show, and you also want the fabric that's important to you that you picked for the photo to show as well. So, that's really up to you. But, th that's why I made uh, this U-shaped line here. And the holes go along the outside of that line. And if you see really close, there are register marks here and going down here. As long as you keep the holes within those register marks... I make a whole bunch of different marks. They're about a quarter inch in uh, diameter. Yeah, cr going across, up and down and across. So as long as you keep within the register lines, as you can see, I have on here, I, these are my own uh, handmade uh, uh, patterns, but I will have a better line quality and hole quality, uh, uh, you know, uh, laid out. Uh, cleaner lined uh, the, for you to print out. And you can print out onto the Easy Print Thermal Web uh, Heat and Bond Light, which is directly onto the paper backing. You cut out around your outside, your inside picture windows, your holes, etc., in uh, strategic uh, positions. I have them strategically lined on the, the three panels the second inside frame front border, and uh, the two, uh, as you can see, this is frame middle top. And the other one says frame middle bottom, as you can see. Uh, but I want to show you how to cut this hole out. Okay, so let me try to do this while I'm here. Okay, so you see, so you see the hole. I have on my finger, I have it where the the scissors go between my two fingers when I poke through. So here, we're going to do this. Watch me. I'm going to poke in the center. Okay, I'm gently poking. Okay, now go. This is where it's tricky. Go around the hole as best as you can. Okay, it's kind of hard doing this. On I'm trying to do it as best I can. I'm staying within the register lines. Um, I'm trying to look at the camera while I'm doing this every few seconds. <laughs> but you see, I'm trying to stay within there. And um, go around. Here I go. Go around. Trying to stay with. You see, I'm coming up to that line. Alright, so I'm coming up to the line, you see? I don't want to go past that line, so because that is where my photo is going to stop. So, as you can see, I'm staying within the line. 
and I'm going to run. See how easy that was? That was super easy. Now, if you have a thicker fabric, which I wouldn't do, I try to stay with the thinner fabrics for the inside panels and stick with the thicker panels for uh, the panels that are facing outwards, like the outside front frame front border, like the ones with the patterns on them. It, for the inside patterns, try to stick with something comparable in color and texture. If it's cotton, stick with a cotton. If it's a polyester satin, stick with a satin, etc. But I would use the thinner ones, uh, thinner fabric panels for the inside layers. But that was simple. And now I'm going to show you another one. And as you can see too, I also notched out here. Where because of the fact that these are so close to the picture window uh, edge, that's why I notched them. And as you can see, I didn't have to on the outside because there's such a wide frame front border. I didn't have to. So these seam allowances, as you can see, are not even close to the hole. That's why. So we're going to do this one. And after this, I will finish uh, ironing down the seam allowances for everything else. Okay. So here we go again. I'm be putting my hole between my two my two fingers. I'm poking in gently, gently, gently. Da uh -huh. And then I'm going in. Do -do -do. And stay see I'm staying within the register. Staying within these register marks. And go around. If you have to go around again, that's great. But I'm going to try to do this one again. Okay. And it's a little tricky button. I'm trying to if you go outside. That's fine too. But as long as you stay within the register marks and you're butting up against the lines, you're fine. And then, let's see, I'm staying within the register line. You see that? Staying within it. And, uh, da -da 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 -da. Again, stay, aha. Uh -huh. So I stay within my lines, as you can see. I stay within my lines. See that way? And going across, stay within them. And now, and there's one more that I have to cut out, and then we'll be finished. I already cut out the two holes on each of the easel back panels for um, hanging. And the glue should stick with them uh, from the holes that are the, the fusible web that is uh, um, situated around the holes. That, you know, because you already placed the fusible web around there. Um, you don't have to worry about doing any other hot gluing. If you want to, you could take Elmer's glue and water and um, and dabbing it on them before you glue all the parts together with hot glue and you know use your ribbon to connect the panels and so on. But you don't have to because they're facing inside. Uh, and you have so much feasible web around here. Since this is an inside piece and the holes are so far inside, you don't have to. But if you want to, you could dab uh, Elmer's glue and water around the edges and then let it dry on saran wrap or something. And then then uh, uh, attach all your parts, assemble all your parts together. After, of course, all the seam allowances are, you know, ironed down and the holes are cut out, etc., etc. So let's do the rest of these seam allowances, and then we'll move on to the uh, hot gluing things that didn't uh, go down the first time, and then um, uh, running the ribbon through and assembling all your panels. Okay. Okay. So here we have the second inside frame front with the holes cut out using the embroidery scissors, the pointy embroidery scissors, which you could get at Joann's, Michael's, etc. These are, I uh, used a coupon and got them years ago at Michael's. Uh, Joann's has them for about the same price. They're the Ginger brand. Very sharp, pointy edges. Perfect for poking in and cutting the around to the outer area of the circles for the holes. As you can see, we put the ribbon through, and that is going to be for all three panels. One, two, three. The, the second inside frame front, and the two panels for the frame middle. The front, the top one, and the bottom one. As you can see, there are three layers. So what it is, is uh, this is the skinny ribbon that I'm talking about. I finally found a reason to use the skinny ribbon. <laughs> Crafters will love me because sometimes you think, What are you going to use this for? This, as you can see here, I got it at AC Moore. It says one eighth of an inch. 
used to think it was a sixteenth of an inch. Oof, I was off. It's one eighth of an inch. So it's again, it's the skinny ribbon. And it goes perfectly through these holes, which are about one quarter of an inch in diameter. And there are seven of them. So basically you would have enough ribbon to go down, go in and out, in and out, across, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, then go back through the holes back to the other side and not here in hot glue and not on the other side in hot glue. Uh, so you're using this quantity of ribbon. I believe I used a little over uh, close or at least close to at least three and a half feet to uh, four feet I'd say at least 45 inches roughly because you could always cut off the extra but you need enough to make it not on both sides I start at the top left and go in go up and down and under and over and so on every other one and then go back over what you want under and under what you want over and there you go so well, that is how you connect these and this ribbon connection strategically in these spots right here connecting the three panels the two frame middle panels and the second inside frame front border it makes the pocket for the photo to slide in and out it is uh, this edge the inner edge of the holes is about one of one quarter inch from this edge, one quarter inch from this edge, and a little over one quarter of an inch. I believe I did, uh, what did I do? Almost half an inch? Three eighths to a half an inch, roughly. I have to double check. What did I do? I did, let's see, I did, ooh, what is that? Wait, 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 wait. I did, looks like I did half an inch. Half an inch. Half an inch. So it all depends. Basically, one side, the side that is opposite of your, uh, of your, uh, of your, uh, strut leg is going to get the extra pushover, if you will. That way it slides in and out better. And, uh, when you turn it on the side, horizontally, you're going to want to, you know, you're going to want to, yeah, have a, Let's see the whole it's gonna be on the back side. You're gonna have the whole uh the hole is gonna be on one side where the leg's gonna be on the other, so you want it. Uh the the narrower part to be opposite of where the leg is, basically, if that makes sense. Uh, the holes are gonna be strategic, so okay. And plus the fact that you're gonna hot glue these all around and you're gonna hot glue the outer edges, except for of course you know, leaving an opening here, the t the two frame front borders will get hot glued together along the edge at the top, but then you're still going to have that opening for the photo and its clear sleeve, sheet protector photo sleeve, the sheet protector cut up to the size of the photo, and then between the two uh, easel back panels, you'll have an opening for the easel back board, mat board or cardboard. Alright, let me get to doing the ribbing. Okay, so here we go. What we do here is, let's see this, see this right here? You go in, yeah, it's big enough to do this. Now when you have a smaller frame, you may want to make smaller holes. But you go up, over, under, and pull as you go, pull as you go, up, oops, up, pull as you go, pull as you go, there we go, you hear that, <laughs> there we go, up, let's see, over, under, come on now, it's not that hard, I believe it or not, and uh, this part's actually easy, and pull as you go, up and uh, line the holes. Sometimes you need a little help, and that's okay. So let's see, Here. and then do that. Do the holes.
And then do these, as you see here, watch that, once I get the edge through, come on ribbon, do not, here we go, aha, and see that, do you see, now we're going to straighten up these uh, ribbons, and then we're going to go over the under, so we're going to go backwards, and then under, and over, and under, and over, and under and then knot and hot glue the knot on this side bring the thread the ribbon through knot and knot on this side and um, and uh, and hot glue around where the knot is and then snip off where you don't need anything and that will make the pocket for the photo and it's clear photo sleeve to stay in place let me finish the going through the other direction and I'll show you my knots later and uh, and uh, then we'll get to hot gluing everything together and putting the ribbon between the two uh, finished uh, strut leg panels um, where I left that space between the two back, no, the two front, I believe, yeah, the two front strut leg panels for the ribbon to connect the strut leg pocket to the Esau back panel, which is not attached yet. It gets hot glued on. Lots of hot gluing is coming up. Wow. Woohoo. Alrighty. Let's do it. See how I thread the ribbon through both the ends here and now I have a little bit of a tail to tie. I will tie it around here, make a knot, and put some hot glue here. Bring this through this side, tie around this, make a knot, and glue here too. So that is what we're doing. I'm going to do this, tighten this up. As you can see this has a little bit of an inch extra width here versus here and this makes just an, just enough just enough uh, to do that and then I will um, after I'm done knotting and hot gluing and, and tightening these up a bit and uh, you know double knotting on both sides and uh, snipping away the excess I'm going to take the frame front here and I am going to put hot glue between the inside edges between these two layers just these two the frame the second inside frame front and the front frame front border and just putting glue around putting glue around the edges close to the edge close to the edge and putting them in place. Do one edge at a time. You stop here, and then you go to here, and go to here. Put your finger underneath each of the corners so that way you don't get any glue onto the two frame metal panels which are connected with your ribbon that just did. Now you could, you could hot glue the, the picture window inside uh, edges first and then connect fold this back and connect your ribbon through the three panels second inside frame front border and the two frame middle panels but I'm gonna do it this way uh, and then you glue the top along here the two frame front borders just the two frame front borders not these not the two frame middles because you need because you need that opening for the picture and its photo sleeve and then you can hot glue all the outer edges this to the second and the two frame middle panels together and then you can connect them both, hot glue them both all the way around just make sure you leave that opening between these four layers and you'll be fine and then we'll work on the easel back panel and we'll work on the strut leg panels You see that double knot and that extra glue? I added some glue here, added some glue here. It is glued down. I double knotted on the glue here. I double knotted on the back side of the frame middle panel, as you could see. And before that, I had glued, as you could see, I glued this knot here. And now I'm going to glue on the frame middle panel. Okay, this you want to be. Oh, you want to be. How can I do this? Oh, nice one. 
Alright, I'm trying to do this so that you can follow and, and uh, everything's okay. First things first, I'm going to go, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to hunker these puppies down here. Just use your nozzle, use your nozzle and use the little bit that's in there and just, nope, <laughs> I do it, hold it down. And you can do that for all, all the panels. Just, you're supposed to do this before <laughs> join the panels. Okay. You can always peel off all the funky corners and all the little blue bits. Do that later if you want. Okay. And if it's a little weird, just, you know. In here, okay. I'm see this. I'm pulling. I'm using my finger to make any sense. I'm just rounding out with my with my fingers here. This way they won't fray. And do that with all four uh, corners, all three layers. Just make sure that they're not, you know, that they're secure, not fraying any bit. Use the nozzle. Use the nozzle here. Use it to nudge your, your little corner frayed corners into place towards, you know, the back sides where all the uh, business, if you will, is going on and not any uh, panels showing outward. So, okay. So here you see we have, here's the opening, here's the bottom, here are the sides. So you know, oh, this is the opening, this is the top. Okay, so you know that you have to put the frame in going in the right direction. <laughs> so, line up your edges. I'm going to do this sideways because of the way that I do it. <clears throat> and hopefully my hand doesn't get in the way. I am scooching all this in place. Let's see. Okay. Making sure. Okay, here we go. Alrighty, sorry about my hand being in the way. Okay, I'm, hmm, I don't know if you can see, I'm doing this. I see where I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm starting at the top, I'll go along the edge. Okay, and do that, and then get ready here. Don't mind my sleeve. Very carefully do that. Very carefully, as you can see. As you can see. Okay, if there's any glue that comes out, use your finger. Run it across. Push it in. You know, we could always peel it off later. Press down hard. Make sure it's down there. Sometimes you could use your fingernail. I'm going to use my fingernail here. And, uh, See, you see any mistakes? Isn't that interesting and wonderful? I'll pull it as I go. Make sure you try to make it nice and even looking. Oh, that's so much nicer. See what I did? Okay, now I'm gonna do the other, the other, uh, the other edges. Going, glue in the two, just the two frame the, uh, frame front borders, the picture window inside edges together. That's all. And then I'll go around and I'll do all the outer edges along all the outer edges and join as much as you possibly can. Join the two frame front borders, join the two frame middle panels, and then you can glue the two together on three sides. And all you're going to do is glue between these two layers. Leave that opening, as you could see, leave the opening. These two, these two get glued, these two tops get glued. Okie doke, okie doke. Okay, you've seen the ribbon tail, the ribbon tail end here. Uh, what I did was I did about ten inches, and I think you could do nine inches too. But under this is for the big five by seven, uh, the big frame for the five by seven, which is eight by ten inch, eight inch across by ten inch. Long, but um, this is the bigger frame for the 5x7 photo because the 5x7 photo will fit in this. Okay, so 
we're going to glue this ribbon in place. Again, I was talking about, um, I had stopped before, um, the ribbon. You want it to be in the back, the inside layers to be of the same uh, tune and value as much as possible. They don't have to be the same color, but they have to be uh, some, a color in the, in the print. Something that's inconspicuous. So that's why I want the blue because it's this lighter blue because it's, uh, fairly inconspicuous color in the background uh, and it will blend in better uh, and give contrast to these other uh, images this art in the fabric print. What I mean by value is how bright or how dull or muted it is. This I'd say it's pastel so it's not too dull but it's not too bright. And tone is either how light or how dark a color family is. So this pinky purple color and this light blue are kind of one being almost white and ten being almost black or black. I would say it's between two and three. And anything um, darker than this color I wouldn't go with. But as long as they're in the same, they go with the colors in the fabric and they're in the same um, value and, t and um, tone you're fine. So I'm going to glue this ribbon in. Again, this is, you can see, the, the print is on this side. So you see we're going to have it hanging out and then it's going to be put uh, in between this layer here, the other end, when I stand it up. It'll be ironed in and hot glued. So we have uh, all three sides. Uh, all the layers are glued together, so you see that we have the ribbon connecting the three inside panels, the frame front border inside, second panel, and the two frame middles, which makes the pocket for the photo and its photo sleeve, which is a clear sheet protector, acid-free, preferably, which you just have to make sure it says acid-free on the packaging, and cut it to the size of the photo. So all three sides, the bottom and the two sides, are all glued down on all layers, and it's just, see, ribbon, just the, the top of the two frame middles and the top of the two frame front borders that are glued together because you need that opening for the pocket for the photo and its clear sleeve protector. And so we would just connect it, flip it over and connect the print back side and just glue the three sides together. This side, this side, and this side. But leave this open because, um, it, you know, and make sure that all the light, the bottoms, which this is closed, just make sure that all three are basically glued down. Make sure you leave this open here because we're going to tuck that ribbon in at the end. And um, what I'm going to do after I glue this, what I'm going to do is it's all the sides are, are glued down. Each, each, the two back for the back and the two for the front. I'm going to add glue here, 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 and here, okay? And then I'm going to have glue go here, 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 and here, leaving an opening for a board just within this realm. You could use your leftover paper as a guide um, from one of these and cut the piece slightly smaller than this area right here. You see that space? You don't want it to extend past that. We're going to have glue had it just glue and just all within the four sides here and glue just at the top, the angle side, vertical, and then across, leaving an opening for the board. And then we'll glue, then that's how it's going to be glued. Um, so it'll be, this area will be glued on the four sides and just around here will be glued. I will hold it up like this after, of course, the ribbon is connected and glued down. Hold it up and glue just that top area just this top area right here and press it down, glue here, press it down, glue here, press it down, glue here, press it down. And then we'll finish making the boards and the and um, the sheet protector photo sleeve and stand it up, figure out how much this needs to be tucked in and then we'll be done.
Okay, so you see the sheep protector that I cut up. Basically, you get two photo protective sleeves out of one sheet of, uh, of uh, sheep protector. You know, the sheep protector pages that come in a pack. Uh, make sure it says acid free on the label. You can get a pack of 50 sheets for as little as three and a half dollars from, the, you know, Walgreens, Target, I think is five dollars. Walmart, I think is three and a half, roughly. Three and a half, four dollars. So you get a lot. Just make sure the label says acid free on it because you want to help your photos stay nice. Um, okay, so you see how I have a quarter inch on this side and I have a quarter inch and a quarter inch. It's cut to the size of the photo. Now you can have a little extra over here at the top. That's fine and dandy. But just make sure that it fits inside the pocket, which is why we have um, the holes uh, a little bit wider on one side so that it goes in and out nicely. And uh, what I used is I took a sheet protector, I turned it to the side, as you can see, here's the folded edge. This is the folded edge, which would have been the side like this. And I basically turned it to the folded edge at the bottom, and I cut it in half, well, roughly. I cut it down to 5x7 and 5x7, uh, with the 7 inch going to where the page uh, holes are on this side. But I used the fold because it's two layers, as you can see. It's two layers, so you can put the photo in between the layers. That's pretty cool. And I basically use this lovely little paper uh, cutter, paper trimmer. It's about ten dollars. They come in handy if you have. If you don't have one, you could always take the sheet protector and you know lay it on its side with the fold facing towards towards you, and. Uh, Use use straight pins. Use your straight pins and mark where your five inches are across for the fold. Unless, of course, you want to use it horizontally, then you would have the fold at the longer side. But use your pins at strategic marks. Just make little, you know, perpendicular running pins, like you know, but that like that go like this. And then just use your scissors. And a, and a ruler too. Don't forget to use a ruler if you have to use marker. Use marker, but make sure that the marker is on the outside of the of the spot where you want to cut. And you know, use your ruler. Mark your spots where you want to go. Use a straight edge from a piece of paper too. That helps too uh, to get everything straight and aligned. And I made uh, so that so you cut that. This helps a lot, but you know, use a nice sharp paper pair of paper scissors. You see there's a little bit of roughness on here, but that's okay. As long as they're straight, try to make it as straight as possible. Uh, and that's how you cut the sheet protector protective photo sleeves for the photo. And they go inside and as you can see I still haven't even uh, attached this yet. Have you noticed too, this uh, is non, it's um one-sided, single-faced uh, satin ribbon. I'm making sure that the satin part faces out and the non shiny part faces in. If you want to use double sided, double face satin, that's great. This is about, you know, what you can see here. Uh, what is it? One and a half. Oh, yeah, one and a half. And uh, it's great for these bigger frames. So um, we're going to be uh, situating this end in a minute. But I'm what I want to do is uh, cut out these the strut leg board and the easel back board out of the mat board. That's next. Okay. So you can see, I'm going to show you how to do it. These are my paper scissors. Again, it's not fabric. So you can cut this. As you can see, it's, you could do this. You could just cut past the line. But guess what? I'm going to use the utility knife. You see how we do that? So I'll just do, i use scissors to cut the strut leg board. As you can see too, another thing, I'm going to take that out, it's missing the top part. With my washable sewn fabric photo frames, the sewing, the ones you have to sew, I would have a, a longer uh, strut leg board. But this time, since we're only putting it in this part that, you know, just the part that bends, the, the lines up here. You can see, see how nice they all throw the pattern? 
So we don't have it for this part right here. We're just having it for this part. And also note too, there's a space, a gap here. It's like a half an inch. So we're gonna have it. We also glued, you know, that one part. So to each other, these two panels, we have glue between the four um, panels. Actually, it's between the two finished panels uh, because each of them. Remember, they have a front and a back and a front and a back. So glue uh, where these two are, but not. <laughs> Makes sense. So, uh, let's see. Okay, so you see that I'm cutting this out. I'm gonna have to do it like so. Let's do this. So I cut past the line, a little bit past the line. I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna try to do this in front of the camera. I'm cutting along the line and do this. It may make it a little. That's okay because they're inside, so you're not going to see them. Uh, the utility knife a sharp, with a sharp blade will make them nice and clean lined. So, okay. So then I did that, and then I turn it, and I'm going to bend it. Now this is where it gets a little tricky, but you could do it with scissors, paper, scissors. All right, that was a little. Oops, 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 oops. Here we go. Get it in there, nice, and do this nice and calmly. You don't want to rush doing this. So, doo -doo -doo. it's cut out just for you. A little bit rough, but that's okay. If you notice it's blue on the other side, you can use any color map board that you want. If you just want to use a plain white one, go for it. Uh, but it's okay to use colored as long as it doesn't show through. If you use, say, um, thinner fabrics, that would be a different story. Then I'd stick with a neutral. But since these are thick, the fabrics, or thicker, I should say, especially the comb cotton from Zazzle. We don't have to worry about that. So, let's try this. Okay, I'm putting in a fresh blade as you can see, as opposed to the disgusting one that I just changed. See that nasty, rusty? Ugh. So, change your blades, really important. Okay, we're gonna cut the easel board with a fresh blade on the utility knife. And what we're going to do is, well, you can see here, it's 9 inches and 7 inches across, 9 inches long. So, okay. Let's what do is let me push this ahead of me. Give me some space between my body and it. Okay. We're going to do this. Hold it down. I'm going to cut. I'm going to focus. I'm going to focus at my end point right here. Not here. So I'm going to focus my eye at this point as I'm cutting that's how you use a utility knife. Now, I'm left-handed. So, but, you know, do this. Okay. And you give it a score. Uh, I'm focusing on the end point. Oops. And then you dig in. Give it a nice push, push over. Focus ahead of the line. Focus ahead of the line. Do it again. This ahead of the line. Here we go. Okay. Then turn it off. By the way, this cost about four or five dollars. You can get blades, blues. It's been a while. I need to go get myself a pack because I am because I am kind of running low. But uh, they have it for under twenty bucks for a lot of uh, a lot of blades, like a hundred. So it's a really good thing to. You can use it for so many things when you're at home too, so it's good to have one of these utility knives at home for different things. Just make sure the blades are out of reach of little hands. And uh, when you cut out, let me cut out this piece. Not the side. Not the thin one. Focus. Oops, sometimes you have to dig up at the end. Push it. 
inside the easel back pocket between the two easel back panels and the two frame noodle panels and it's in there nicely it's not poking out same thing here you have the easel board can you see it let me give you some light here you see this this piece right here see that it's in there so where you go now we can since the boards are in their pockets we can now figure out how much we're going to pitch the leg for it to stand and how much we're gonna how much we stick inside and between the between the um, layers here uh, how much we're gonna glue inside how much we're gonna keep out usually it's about two to three inches no more than three inches but sometimes as little as an inch and a half so let's figure that out Okay, so you see that I'm having a stand up, the frames stand up on a flat surface like this table, the wood table. And you can see I have the board inside, and I have the board inside here to help it look natural in the weight that it would be in. And I have about, you see, I have the ribbon going out this way. I have the pins on, on through the ribbon marking where both sides of the frame's main area uh, would situate and let's see we have about mm, I say, it's hard to see but because I, I mean, I'm a goofy see-through let's see what do we have we have about oh uh, about two and three quarter inches but no, it's kind of small to see but it is about it's about um about two and three inches right about there which is what this space between the strut leg pocket and the easel back panel and um, other layers combine uh, the distance between them so standing up nicely as you could say so we're going to cut away the excess ribbon it's always good to have extra they're not enough you could always use it for something else i'm sure so we'll cut away let me get this in there. Put that in. Alright. And then we're going to use, let's see, this is tri tricky doing this while I'm talking to you on the video. We're going to have this thing. I'm going to this in. Let's see. Let's see here. Of course, I'm going to do, let me see. Give this, tug this, tuck this in. Between the layers, let's see. I'm rolling this up. You see where the pins are? It's kind of hard, but I'm gonna go and do it like so. And you can use your pins, and this is why I'm saying to get a pack of straight pins. You could, you know, tuck and hold them in place, you know, so, so that way. You know, you, you get things to stay in place for you. So what you could do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the hot glue gun, the hot glue gun, and I'm going to. Uh, this is tricky doing this with a camera here. So let me see. Uh, see the ribbon sticking out here. I gotta get that situated. Can't have that. No. Mm -mm. Make sure the ribbon's not sticking out. Make sure it's nice and straight. Ugh, okay. So, hold your thing in place. Hold it in place. <sighs> Again, this is kind of tricky doing this. Yep. While you're doing this. Hold up. <laughs> it's 
me why this is glue going on. It's plugged in. Why it's not pressing up. Okay, I have a little glue gun issue. Let me double check this and I'll be right back with you. But the monorail it is slips now in and out so quietly that the hundreds of guests are never disturbed. Before 10 p.m. Uh, Friday night, March 27th, 2015, and just as proof, I will put on the Weather Channel, just to show you what I'm doing. Channel. Yes, I got a little bit older and wiser. 951. Bare Minerals Foundation is formulated with... Weather Channel, March 27th, 9.51 p.m., 2015. Put back this other channel. I like this channel better than the Weather Channel. But that is to show you that I am going to take this washable, no so fabric photo frame that I just created using Zazzle fabric made by manual woodworkers and I'm going to put it here don't let the hole in the middle I need a larger lingerie bag than this okay bear with me stir up my washer for a minute Done this before. You get one of these larger lingerie bags. You get one of these larger lingerie bags. This is old, older, I should say. And I took out all the boards. I took out all of the, you know, the photo. I took out the clear sleeve. I took out both boards. I wouldn't be putting this in here if I didn't. <laughs> okay may not be as big as I want it, but that's okay. This is all true life here. Alrighty. So you see, that I have the frame inside the lingerie bag. Let me straighten it out. Okay. And, um, I'm going to turn on the water here. Let me see. I'm going to put it on a delicate cycle. Um, put it on a delicate cycle. Let's see here. Uh, put it on. Okay. I'll put it on. There we go. See? See the water flowing? I'm putting it in. And as you can see, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use mild detergent. I'm going to use mild detergent. For about a wash because so just a little. And as you can see, I'm adding it to the water. Basically that's what you're supposed to do. And I'm going to Put this in. Putting this in. As you can see, I'm putting it in. And we're going to see how it turns out. Alrighty. In fact, what else can I do? Uh, the baby blanket. And the baby blanket. And then that way. Put in this baby It's not that dirty. That way it has something about to bounce off with. And also, I use a baby sheet. I'll put in this baby sheet because there's another thing for it to bounce off of. 
Put it on large, and uh, I'm putting in more. I just want to have a nice buffer to work with. This large is okay. So there we go. And now, again, it's almost ten o'clock, March twenty-seventh, and we are going when it's when it's done to take it out. I'll take video again of the time. Uh, that we did it, that we took it out. I have it on light, uh, delicate cycle, and uh, these really aren't that dirty that, that are in there with them, so it's, I had my nephew over today, so, and he didn't make a mess, so they're lightly, very lightly, not even, they're not even soil. So they're in there with the frame. So let's let the washing machine do its magic. As you can see, it, oops, as you can see, it says, uh, Friday, March 27th, 11.03 p.m. Um, it's been a while, as you can see, the piece is in, still in the bag, still together, uh, didn't have a fabric softener, so, okay, here we go, we're gonna open it up, mind you, of course, it's wet, but that's okay. See, here we go. I should get a larger laundry bag than what I bought, but that's okay. That's alright, what are you gonna do? It's what I had. Everything's still intact. Okay, as you can see, we have the fabric here. Alright, it's wet. It's a little see through, you could see, but that's because it's wet. Not too bent. Not too bent. As you can see, everything stayed together. Nothing's out of the ordinary. So I'm going to put it on a towel and have it air dry. And believe it or not, with all the thermal web that's in there, let's see, nothing looks like it's popped out. Nothing looks weird. Uh, let me see here. Let's put it on. Let's put it on the ironing board here. Excuse me while I turn the light on. Alrighty. Okay. So you see, it, it looks good. Um, nothing's feel anything. This is on really well. So far so good. Let's see. Nothing's loose. Nothing nothing nothing's loose. Nothing's loose. I mean I could add a little glue to this area, but nothing but I should have done that from the get go, but let's see. Everything's still firm. Everything's still firm. Nothing's Nothing's lifting away. Mm. I don't feel anything weird. Nice. 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 Nothing. Nothing was on. Nothing was lifted. Let's see the top. Oh. Feel anything lifting away or separating? Nothing's, nothing's separating. I don't feel it. I don't feel anything. This is nothing separating the strut leg. This is all. Well, so far so good. We'll figure it out. Um, we'll see how things go. I'm gonna. Wow, well, look. Look at that. Standing even without boards. Pretty cool. You know what that is? That's a thermal web. That's a heat and bond ultra hold that I have on there. That is why I use the ultra hold versus the heat and bond light or the feather light. It is thicker, yes, but it is acid free. And I think the thickness of the ultra hold over the heat and bond light or feather light is what's making it stay nice and straight and, and strong. 
So we'll let this all air dry and um, go from there. Looks pretty good to me. And you see why I used blue for the inside layers? It's inconspicuous. It goes, it blends, it just works. Could have gone with the brown. Could have gone with a dark gray, like a lavender gray, or the lavender gray for the line. But I went with the light blue. And I think I'm pleased. Everything looks good. Everything looks good. Nothing's separating. This isn't separating. This is really, you know, connected. Alright, I'm going to shut this off. And I'm going to upload this video. And then tomorrow, it, we'll see how it is when it's dry. Awesome. Thank you very, very much for uh, viewing my video, uh, checking out my YouTube channel on how to make washable no-sew fabric photo frames. Again, using the Zazzle fabric by Manual Woodworkers printed in North Carolina. Again, the frame stands on its own, has 10 panels, 10 fabric panels. You cut 10 fabric panels, uh, slightly bigger than the patterns which are cut from heat and bond by Thermoweb Ultra Hold, or you could use Feather Light or Heat and Bond Light. And the patterns will be available on, on the actual fabric on Zazzle.com. I'm at Zazzle.com slash Fabricated Frame slash Fabric. It's going to be in my description to, you know, go to the link there, as well as Craftsy.com, and the link's on the YouTube channel. Uh, and all the patterns will be in the, in the, uh, that you could print out on your inkjet printer. Uh, use any kind of fabric, really. Uh, if you want, just use, um, you could use the pattern fabric just for the back and the front and the back of the strut leg panel that faces out. And then use plain cotton or satin. You could even use satin. I've used satin from Joanne Fabrics, and it blushes. Not all, some, not all though. Just test one before you do it. Test one in the wash. And uh, then you could use just a coordinating color for that. And uh, it's really simple using hot glue, thermoweb, ribbons, skinny ribbon. I found a use for the skinny ribbon to go through the holes on three of the inside panels to make the photo pocket. You can't see because there's hot glue and thermoweb that make it so that you can't see anything. If you keep it nice and tight and straight, you know, and, and do it slowly, you know, and carefully, you can do this. You can do this. And it's washable. You'll see it in my video. It's washable in the tutorial on YouTube. Uh, I show how I wash it and how I let it to dry. <laughs> so, thank you very, very much. This is Christy Hubler with FabricatedFrames.com. Thank you very much for watching my video.